Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, Tank of Blitz Universe to the channel. We're going to talk today about this tank, the Type 59 Pattern. We're going to talk about the crates which are again in Wargaming. This is the reward you can get from it. Um, I'll show how many crates I needed to open it to get the tank on a press account. Um, three games, as per usual in the review, it's a full Bells and Whistles review, so uh, don't worry about that. You get all the info you want on the tank. But first, things first, <laughs> this, this thing, it is ugly as hell. I mean, just just look at it. it when I saw it uh, in the game in, in Blitz, it, it reminded me of this. Funky looking cartoon tanks made by Mang models. Uh, this is not sponsored, I don't have any of these tanks. But, yeah, it, it, the, the hull is just too small for the turret. The turret is huge. It has a massive cupola still on top. It it's, hasn't got that M48 pattern turret. Uh, the new one, it's the old one basically. Um, and anybody who has played a pattern, uh, a Pershing, a Super Pershing, uh, a Type 59 uh, itself of course as well, but anybody who has played tanks with gun depression will know uh, what to do in this tank and it means that you have to go hold down and that you have to use the gun depression. You have good mobility, like I said we'll do a full stats and numbers uh, thingy after uh, the first uh, game, this one on Canyon. And yeah, you can really work areas like this, and it it it's not well, it, it's not a not a bad tank. It it isn't a really exciting tank either. It gets the job done, but uh, so do other medium tanks at tier eight, and there's just uh, a lot of them at uh, tier eight uh, at the moment uh, to choose from. You still have the CDC um, event where you can get the AMX CDC. I have that in the review as well in in the sets and numbers in a comparison. And for transparency's sake, um, the equipment I'm running on the 59 pattern at the moment are a gun rammer, improved modules and improved optics on line 1. We have an enhanced gun laying drive, improved assembly for more hit points on line 2. And engine accelerator because I have the Type 59 on my own account and I found it a bit lacking in terms of pickup. And that yeah, it transfers to the pattern in, in that regard so I decided to go with a slightly uh, better acceleration. Engine accelerator is there. You could use the uh, uh, improved traverse or improved control as it's named in Blitz of course. But yeah, I, I decided to go with the accelerator and well, works fine. Vertical stabilizers on line 3. Uh, the repair the toolbox and a consumable delivery system which uh, means a fully maxed out tier 8 type 59 pattern. So let's take a look at the stats and numbers. I like to do that actually for uh, most of the tanks uh, which I play, uh, which I review because that gives me an idea of uh, what a tank can do in terms of stats, what are weaknesses and strengths and I get a feeling for how I have to adapt my gameplay um, uh, 9 out of 10 times uh, to a certain type of tank. 9 out of 10 times if you can't perform in a tank it's usually <laughs> you doing uh, stuff um, that isn't really well suited to the characteristics of the tank. And you can see I'm checking here what the um, weapon handling is on the tank. It is, uh, it's good, it has good handling. Um, uh, especially if you compare it to uh, some of the other tanks on the uh, on the roster here. But on the other hand, um, the maneuverability isn't that good. Uh, it, it it hasn't got a weak engine, but it's a fairly heavy tank. I think that uh, uh, the big turret adds a bit of weight to the whole package. So you have to get it into a position to be successful, where you can abuse that frontal armor of the tank, that uh, Type 59 type front plate, um, the typical American gun mantlet and preferably hide the cupola. It, and <laughs> hiding the cupola, that's not a guaranteed task. You have a slightly better uh, frontal armor uh, compared to the stock Pershing, but yeah, it's nothing to really write home about because uh, the 59 pattern, you, you can see it here, it, it has a huge cupola. And if you if you check it against uh, an ISU-152 on the flat surfaces of Blitz, um, you're going to get wrecked completely. I mean, two shots, you're gone and you will probably not be able to out-DPM unless you track him. 
But if you then get it um, into a hull down position, especially at range, you are making it a bit harder to shoot the weak spots on the turret, except for the cupola and left and right side of the gun. But a little wiggling about uh, turning the turret left and right and making it hard for you, uh, uh, making it hard to hit you, and especially the weak spots, you will be able to pull off some bounces. And if you then take a look at the tanks at tier seven, uh, tier seven opponents, uh, now we're going to take a look first at tier eight uh, mediums, uh, which you will face. Obviously, the um, the T44, the Air Max. You have the Sand, the Panther II has made an appearance. They will have a problem. You have a very good, strong frontal armor profile, provided you keep that lower plate hidden. And provided you don't give them <laughs> easy shots on your cupola, because yeah, that that's a massive weak spot. And if you then switch to tier seven tanks, the mediums, they will have problems against you. You have the armor profile of a hold on have your comet. Uh, here it is, um, AMX thirty seventy five SP1C. They they will have problems going through. You will be able to side scrape uh, at a glance as well because you have fairly wide tracks. And just for completeness' sake, uh, we are going to test it against uh, one of the tier 8 heavies, the T-34. There we are. And if you don't overangle, you will be able to catch a shot on your tracks as well. And it's pretty much the same as with the pattern, an M46 pattern. With the M48 pattern, don't angle your gun further than the inner side of your track wheel. If you keep the gun trained to the left and the right uh, and keep it inside of your tracks, then you have the perfect angle to catch shots on your tracks. In the meantime, we are looking at all the boxes I have been opening because this is a crate tank. And I think this is actually pretty appalling. Um, I refuse to buy those crates on my own account. I've bought them on a contributor account. You can see we're clicking through very, very quickly. No tank yet. I bought, what was it, 60 lucky crates with a 1% drop rate and 4% uh, percent charms. Or was this a reliable? I'm not sure really. This was a reliable container, I think, where you got one, no, it was a lucky. 4% drop rate, one charm. I opened 45 of them, as you can see here. And still, <laughs> <laughs> no sign of a Type 59 pattern whatsoever. So I decided to buy a few more uh, crates, then uh, mix the Reliables and the Luckies uh, together, because it's one on four. It's either 1% drop rate and four charms, or one charm and 4% drop rate. Um, decided to open another one. This was a Reliable container, uh, a Lucky container. Here we switched to Reliable container. Still no tank, but we have 50 charms. Switching back to the Lucky container, uh, finally, there it was. So that meant I opened 48 crates. I didn't. I did do some maps earlier. It was 51 charms. I said 51 crates on, on the Discord server, but still, four, 48, 48 sorting crates before I got the tank. Um, checking upon the saw and uh, the the price of the gold bundles and all, I think I had to spend. If I had bought it myself, I think I would have had to spend, say, 250 to 300 euros to get all the crates uh, in there. And of course, you get some gold back and you get some boosters and you get some other stuff back. Um, but it would have been 150 or so, I think, in terms of euros spent on a tier 8 medium tank. And, well, not to say it, it isn't even a really brilliant tank at that. Uh, one of the people on Emperor server remarked, um, even for an OP tank that would be pretty expensive. Well, even if it was OP, I'm not going to pay 150 euros for a pixel tank, unless I really, really like it. Um, but it seems, yeah, that, that those crates, they are there in Blitz and Wargaming are, I think, pushing the limits of what is legal. They are, of course, now advertising the drop rates, which is good. But still, it is a form of gambling, really. Um, I, I don't like it. I, I don't like this. I, I really would prefer them to just sell bundles, even if wickedly expensive, because then you would know what you will get for certain. Um, having those charms adds a bit to 
the certainty of getting a tank because you know if you have 100 charms you will get a tank that means you will have to buy if you want to have a guaranteed tank buy 25 uh, containers of four charms which are the lucky ones I think yeah those have 1% drop rate and four charms so the lucky ones get you uh, a guaranteed tank after 25 crates but still 25 crates that is 36k of gold, which is, I think, the big bundle. So that's 100 euros, and you will get it. Um, yeah. Crates. I don't like that. And I think that's, that's an understatement. That's an understatement. Um, in the meantime, we are doing the business here with the 59 pattern. You can see I'm moving from hold down position to hold down position. Uh, luckily, uh, my positions weren't contested by any of the tanks on the red team. Um, it seems that the map Alpenstadt is still not uh, really um, familiar to most players. I found the area we were driving in over here to be yeah, pretty good actually. Because uh, you can go uh, all the way up and you have uh, good views into the left and right side of the spawn. This is, uh, I got uh, stuck early on this rock actually on uh, <laughs> the MX3075 <laughs> and still drive into it. Stupid me. Um, but yeah. I really like the map. I like the possibilities you have here. Uh, it's it's easy to get isolated. It's easy to isolate red tanks. Make a bit of a mistake. He actually should have stayed up and then behind the rock. Um, but we can shoot uh, the tiger again. He's going to face hug us. We're going to catch a shot on the tracks. There we go. And you can see from the front, even the tiger too. It, it isn't a really well armored uh, tier 8 medium from the sides it, it hasn't got a brilliant armor profile but I would have needed heat to go through his front which shows that the penetration values on his gun aren't very good so don't fight have his hat on just don't forget about it out of your mind now don't fight them hat on this is a flanking hold down maneuverable tank it isn't it, it, it combines well, devil's advocate really I think it combines the best of both worlds having that time 59 chassis with the pattern turret it gives you a bit of more of a bit more of gun depression but then again if you look at it, it, it it's not a really 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 big deal actually because the pattern has obviously 10 degrees of gun depression um, but I think I don't think the time 59 is actually that far behind and if you take the stats on Blitz Hangar or maybe even on Blitz Stars, if you look at the gun depression on a Type 59, that's 7. 7 degrees. It's only plus 3 for the pattern. It, it's not like, like I have it with the T62 and the pattern at tier 10 where it is plus 5. It's plus 3. And the turret on the Type 59, it's low slung. It hasn't got that monumental weak spot on the top. Uh, in the meantime, we are really shredding this T34. I know I'm farming an AFK tank, but he's annoying <laughs> sitting over there because he would uh, get me spotted every time I wanted to poke out. So I kept checking my angles. I didn't want to get shot by the boss seek or the 30 uh, in, uh, in red spawn. Trying to blind shot on the 30, I will probably miss, but yeah, I missed. But tried anyways and I've already seen from the line up and, and from the, the way the teams are spread out that um, this is going to be a tricky game so we're going to take a bit of a risky but cheeky shot on that ice 3 any other tanks available no not there 30 is going, isn't going to shoot me can I shoot someone over here can I respot any tanks nope not available uh, so yeah we just have to take and hold the hill in the meantime, the WZ120 has flanked all, all, all around, and I kind of realized I was very lucky because this boss he didn't pay attention to me. He was probably spot. No, yeah, he wasn't spotted. Yeah, he, he, he might have spotted the WZ120 himself and then got scared and hit behind the rock or something. But luckily, he didn't shoot me in the butt, which would have had, which would have hurt really uh, badly. And that also allowed me to uh, stay here, turn on the spot, and this is uh, what you can see in terms of pickup and, and acceleration. It isn't really good. Uh, the 54 on the red team uh, takes out our IS, our friendly uh, heavy on the entrance of the hill. And I have to dogfight uh, the T54, and you can see again that hat on with AP, 
uh, not the best. I switched the heat. I wanted to uh, yeah, shoot him and do some damage. Then they decided, all right, I might as well try to track him, force him to burn his repair kit. And then I start using my heat because, yeah, I have to shoot him and, and try to take him out as much as possible. I, I don't really have a chance, actually, I think, against... Uh, a dedicated T-54, but luckily I can put one more shot into his side. Can't go around, can't block him on the rocks. Well, thank you WZ120 for moving in and helping me out. Um, because he put a nice little big shot into the T-54 and finishes him off. And yeah, I haven't included this game because it, it, it it's... I mean, this isn't an exciting game. It, it isn't really brilliant in terms of gameplay. Uh, it, it is an ace game. Um, but that has mostly to do with me farming that AFK T-34, so thank you for that, being a AFK and allowing me to shoot you for nearly all your health. Helped a lot in getting an ace and getting the XP up. Um, but I've included this one as well to show the problems you have when you are facing tier 9. You have a, have a gun that is good, that's reliable, it is on a stable gun platform, which helps a lot. Gun handling is nice and all. But the biggest problem is the penetration uh, on it. Um, heat helps in that regard. I haven't mentioned that yet, but it has heat uh, with excellent penetration uh, characteristics. But heat is temperamental as well. It has problems with spaced armor. I'd rather have APCR for premium ammo like the Pershing has, like the Super Pershing has. Because that's more reliable in going through uh, side armor and space armor. And you will see a lot of things with space armor uh, on, on this tier. With uh, all the ISs on. Uh, on tier 8 and tier 9. IS3. Uh, IS3 Defender. IS2SH. You have the IS5. The IS8. You will see them all. And also things with uh, tracks on the side. You, you can see. You just saw that last shot uh, I did on the T-34. It, it hit on his tracks. I'm timing here to move in uh, for a shot on the side of the T-34, then move around so the WZ can finish off. And we get the job done. No idea whatsoever what that friendly Centurion Mark 1 was doing there in uh, the bottom left corner of the minimap. But like I said, this was the 8th game, 3.4k damage, um, 1249 for a tier 8, it's a low bar for an ace. But like I said, I wanted to show this one to show you uh, what you can do in a tank and the problems you will face in the Type 59 pattern. Worth the money? Mm, no, not in the current uh, form with all the crates and stuff, uh, if you ask me. That said, I thank you all for tuning in to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, tankers of Blitz Universe. Please check our related videos as well and remember to like and subscribe if you like the content for more. Cheers and happy tanking!